me again. So it's the second video, the second lesson, I think, all to do with this. Um, it's called harmonics. This harmonic form. Um, so we've got it says about the maximum value. Right. So I've got the equation written up there, which is five cos theta minus thirty six point nine. I'm just going to drop from it here. Now we said part C. We said it was a, a stretch scale factor five in the y direction, and it was a translation of thirty six point nine degrees there. So we said that, didn't we? Now we've got to think about that because it is just a cos graph, and what's important about a cos graph is that we know that a cos graph just bounces between plus or minus 1. With the 5, it'll bounce between plus or minus 5. But the bit in the box that I'm really, really interested in just bounces between plus or minus 1. So what that means, and this is quite important, is its maximum value is when cos of theta minus 36.9 degrees is equal to 1, the top of the graph. But also, it doesn't mention these two questions talk about the max, not the min, but it's minimum when the black box, cos of theta minus 36.9 degrees, is down the bottom at minus 1. So what it means for us, the maximum value, so the max value, is 5 lots of and make that black box into 1. So the max value is 5. There. So that's found the max value. So all I do is imagine there's a box around the cos part and make it equal to 1 and see what I get out. Now where it occurs, because it says when it, where it occurs here, so where it occurs I'm just solving cos theta minus 36.9 is equal to 1. So theta minus 36.9 degrees, if I do the inverse cos of 1, uh, I get 0 out. So the first, and they tend to always ask for the first positive value. So on an exam question, they'll ask me for the first positive value. And this is something which I'll definitely go through in class, a different example. We'll make them up, because this is one where, once you've done it a few times, they're dead easy. But I think the whole look of it makes it look horrible. But they're really, really easy for us, once we've done a few. So you have a go at the maximum, pause it, have a go at the maximum, but I've uh, sorry, the, the one for you. But I'm, I'll do it as well, I'll do it at the side now. So if you want to be good, pause it, if not, just follow it. That's what we've got then, so we've got stretch. Scale factor 30 in the y direction. We've actually covered quite a lot of tricky maths. But I think I taught as slow as I could on the other bit to try and make, make it more understandable. But this is one of those where you need, you need to watch the video, you need to have a little go, and then you need me to explain it again. Because with maths, you just don't get it the first time. No matter how good you think you were from school, there are bits where you just think, oh my God, what's, where's this happening? Why has he made that up? And you need that extra time and that extra opportunity to go through it again. Which is why we do the bits, to be honest. Which is why I like record 2,000 minutes worth of lessons and give up all my free time for it. Because it helps, it does help. Right, so, same idea with sine graph. I know that the sine graph bounces between plus or minus 1. So at its max, the box, the black box, sine of theta plus 22.6 degrees is equal to 1. And for the minimum, sine of theta plus 22.6 degrees is equal to minus 1. So my max value is just 13 times by whatever's in the black box, which is 1. So it's equal to 13, my max value. And that occurs 
when sine of theta plus 22.6 degrees is equal to 1. So theta plus 22.6 degrees is, so sine graph is that's 90, isn't it? So I'm going to take off 22.6 degrees, which is 67.4, I reckon. Yeah. Just check the answer on the back. 67.4. This is, like I said, this is tricky. We've made it. The previous page put it into harmonic form. In fact, we'll just knit back and we'll write harmonics. Because it's called harmonic form. Harmonic form. Right. There. Okay, that's what we've got now. So we've got another example, I think, down here. Which talks about how you choose it. So, I mean, it all comes from using the big compound angle formulas. These here, the compound angle formulas. All comes from using this and comparing coefficients. But like I say, I don't do the formula, for the full way, call formula. Right, so let's have a look. Starts off with sign. So must be sine. Starts off with cos. So must be cos. Starts off with sine. So must be sine. I've never seen an exam question that actually asks you to choose it, but there's no reason why it doesn't. Uh, cos. Put my feet in. Put my feet in. Put my feet in. Put my feet in. You've got to remember from the compound angle formulas, because these plus or minus is here are the same, then for sine, it's the same. So because that's a plus, do it a different colour, because that's a plus, it gets a plus there. So for sine, it's the same. So for sine, it's the same. Minus. Now, if you look at the cos compound angle formula, the plus minus is the opposite way around on the sines. So cos is the opposite. So sine is same is the one to remember, isn't it? And cos is opposite. You can't really do much with that. I've not really thought about much about that really. Over the years, I've just always said cos is opposite. Right, so. If that's a plus, it gets a minus. If that's a minus, it gets a plus. There. So the idea, the plan for this is to put it into harmonic form, find the R, the stretch, find the alpha, the translation, and see what you can do with them. So let me pause this for a second. Right, I'm back with you. So on the next page is a consolidation questions, which we'll do in class. And what I'll do is I'll find some exam questions. We'll do some proper exam questions as well. Right, so the next bit will be for the third lesson here, or lesson three. So I'm going to stop that now. Well done, everyone.